Senator Dames. Uh, thank you, Madam President and members. Uh, the A66 amendment would take the 1.8% governor's requested increase for the various agencies and departments and move that into money to help our nursing homes. Uh, that would be a total of about $19 million. And uh, our nursing homes, especially in rural Minnesota, are in severely need of, this, of these funds. And uh, in the bill, I think we put in $25 million so, so far. And that's just not going to get it done. We have homes in rural Minnesota that are closing. I think there was a home in one of the districts just closed again last week. Uh, they're having a lot of trouble hiring folks. They can't compete. In some of these small towns, these uh, uh, salaries aren't that high, but they still can't compete with their local community employers. They're losing their employees. They have a hard time of uh, getting the dollars for training because there's such a large turnover. And uh, yet we just kind of ignored them in this bill. So this would be one way to get some money for that. Uh, this 1.8% increase is, a ba it is an annual increase or about 3.6% per biennium. And uh, I find it interesting that uh, this is above and beyond the contracted rates that uh, our employer, state employers have agreed to in their, in their union contracts. So I think that this would be a much better way of doing this. Uh, I think that our seniors uh, are deserving of this kind of care. I think our nursing homes need the assistance that we can give them, and, and I think that this would be the right thing to do. Discussion, Senator Wilson. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in strong support of this amendment. And obviously, everyone in this chamber knows that it, uh, the crisis that the long-term care industry is facing, and I say crisis, and I mean crisis. It is absolutely horrendous what is, what is happening to our long-term care facility, facilities and to our aging population. And Senator Dames mentioned the facility that closed last week. Well, guess what, members? That was in my district also. I had 15 nursing homes in my Senate district that I'm honor honored to serve, and now I'm down to 14. Where are those? Where is the elderly going to go? Where, who's going to be taking care of them? I, it's, it's getting to be a crisis. A lot of it is the workers, uh, the workforce shortage issue, but it's also the payment rate uh, structure. Senator Lori, you know this very well because you're the author of the bill that brought in this rate uh, change adjustment, and I appreciate that. But we have a, what, $25, $28 million appropriation in your bill for the long-term care industry. This is absolutely not acceptable. This does nothing to change the issue that we have out in greater Minnesota. So members, please support this amendment. Give the seniors the, the respect and uh, the, the, the priority that they deserve because we are in a very, very serious issue, especially in greater Minnesota. Senator Dames. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, uh, as, as Senator Rosen alluded to, it is a crisis. And during the interim break, I met with several nursing homes, several administrators, and it was the same story in every nursing home. The funding is not adequate to meet the needs to provide the services that we need to be providing to our seniors. A couple of weeks ago, I invited the nursing homes in southwest Minnesota, the administrators, into the Capitol, and they had the opportunity to meet with Commissioner Jessen. And I really appreciated uh, the commissioner taking the time to meet with them. And it was, it was kind of heart-wrenching to listen to the stories of what's going on in these nursing homes and what's happening and how hard it is to get the workers and the overtime hours and things like that that are going on, how hard it is to get the dollars to train the people because of the fact that we're not putting money into this process. The money that I'm asking to take out of the 1.8% or 3.6% by, for biennium, it's not really targeted any program. It's going to administration of overhead of the Department of Health and Human Services. It's not going to help people with health care needs. It's not going to help people with mental health issues. It's not going to help people with disabilities in our communities. 
And most importantly, it's not going to help seniors in our nursing homes. So my amendment takes the money set aside for this 3.6 increase from the bureaucracy and shifts it to our nursing homes where it can do some good and, and help our seniors. I would appreciate a green vote on this amendment. Senator Dames, are you then requesting a roll call? Yes, I am, ma'am. Thank you, Madam President. Senator Nelson. Thank you, Madam President. I rise in favor of the Dames Amendment. Um, members, our nursing homes are at the tipping point. I received two communications just this morning from nursing homes that are on the brink of bankruptcy. It was not too long ago that there was a nursing home in my district that did need to go under state receivership. Members, we cannot afford to ignore this issue. There is not sufficient funding in this mammoth bill before us to take care of our seniors. It is of epic proportions. We're not even talking about the level of care. We're just talking about trying to keep the lights on, keep enough nurses and assistants there to care for our loved ones. Members, I urge support of this priority. We have to ask ourselves, are we going to fund bureaucracy and growth in bureaucracy and a universal rate increase amongst the administration at the cost of our seniors and at a cost of our long-term care facilities that are starving. There are other policies that I won't go into today that we have decided in this legislature where we are truly starving our long-term care facilities, and it is immoral. I urge support of the Dames Amendment, which will make a small dent in trying to keep our nursing homes alive. Madam President. Senator Lurie. I resent being referred to as immoral and would request an apology. Senator Nelson. Um, I will not, the issue I do believe is a moral issue and I do apologize for using the inappropriate word. Thank you. Apology accepted for the body. Uh, Senator Lori, did you have further comment? Senator Strom. Madam President, uh, members, uh, I urge your support of this amendment. Uh, the Dames Amendment goes in the right direction for our nursing homes, although I wish we could be offering more than this amendment brings forth. But, uh, members, this is a pretty simple, simple question. Do we want 1.8 percent and then double that after the, for the second year uh, to go to agencies, or do we want to deal with the crisis that is in our nursing homes out there uh, with the staff and the administration uh, running these facilities to take care of our loved ones, senior citizens in most cases? Where's the priority going to be for this Senate? And it's unfortunate this bill doesn't have more in it uh, than than we've got for nursing homes. That is one of our core things to fund. And we, as a state, shouldn't be adding hardly anything else, whether it's in education, whether it's in health and human services, whether it's in uh, other things that we fund without taking care of the core things we already have an obligation to fund. And so, members, this is a common sense amendment we don't need to give agencies a 1.8% increase to deal with potential costs or things they want to uh, add to uh, their agency in the next two years over our nursing homes that are crying out for help. Uh, Senator Nelson talked about it, uh, members, others have talked about it. I've visited my nursing homes and my communities and talked to administrators. They are closing beds in some of my nursing homes and holding them vacant because they merely cannot get enough staff to support them. They can't offer enough to staff to get them to come. I had an amendment in Finance Committee that 
was uh, the Senator Eakin's bill that him and I, uh, he, co he authored, I co-authored, that dealt with just two nursing homes along the North Dakota border, Border City's North nursing homes. They are competing right across the river with North Dakota and what their legislature has done for their nursing homes, which has given them boosts and increases to deal with issues they have to deal with. But the problem is then the folks in Breckenridge and Moorhead can get paid more going across the border. That's just a short drive, a couple miles, and they're there. And so our nursing homes that Senator Eakin and I are trying to advocate for in, in the bill uh, legislation that he introduced would help bring their rates up to the median level of our state. That's not in this bill either. That bill was voted down in finance, or amendment was voted down in finance when I tried to offer it. And so members, this would go the right direction in supporting our nursing homes. It doesn't go far enough. I hope the House can help us out here. Sounds like they will. But members, the nursing homes and the reimbursements that they have to deal with are real. And they can't find the staff to take care of our elders and the residents in the nursing home and the years of their life where they need the help. When my nursing homes continue to tell me they have to keep beds empty because they can't get enough staff and the reimbursements don't cover it. And in one case, I've got a nursing home. Lucky they have a hospital next to them and uh, other profit centers because that's the only thing that's keeping them open right now. And so members, that's how dire the situation is. This vote is very clear. Either stick with our, support our nursing homes in this time of crisis or stand with the state agency and make sure they get a 1.8% and then a 3.6% increase. I think it's pretty obvious, pretty clear what we should be doing. Senator Brown. Thank you, Madam President. And members, I'd like to thank Senator Deems for offering this amendment and for the other senators who have spoken up in favor of supporting the nursing homes in Minnesota. Members, our bureaucratic administrative uh, costs our bureaucr bureaucracy in Minnesota is not going to fail. It's not going to go in the hole if they don't get this money. Many of our nursing homes will. They're struggling, as, as other senators have described. This money can help keep them afloat. It's the right thing to do, members. Show Minnesota that we support our nursing homes, and I ask for your support of this amendment. Senator Rosen. Thank you, Madam President. I'd just like to speak one more time about this because Senator Lori, we know what your priorities are, and they are the aging, they are children, the, and, the, and the folks that, that struggle with mental health. We know that. And, I, and we understand that, that um, you've done the best you can with this bill. However, I think this is a reasonable approach. I've been here 13 sessions, and I have never, ever seen the angst, the anxiety, the acute despair that these long-term care facilities are facing and bringing forward. This is at the level that we cannot turn back. And you will see many more nursing homes closing in the very near future. I had one administrator calling me crying because she could not find any RNs for the shifts. We have done absolutely everything we can in the long-term care industry to somewhat mitigate this issue for years, whether it was critical access or some kind of extra funds. But we have federal regulations, we have state regulations, we've tied their hands. They need a rate increase, plain and simple, to be able to keep and retain these workers because they are leaving. They cannot be paid enough to stay in the nursing homes and there's basically just a shortage. So members, I am, I am very nervous about what's going to happen to our aging. It is a priority. I know for every single one of us here, the, the, the bill that you had, Senator Lori, brought the greater Minnesota rates up to what the Metro are, made some adjustments. I think that's very reasonable. This is a way we can at least bridge that gap and provide some relief for our, our industry. Thank you. Senator uh, Senjum. Thank you, Madam President. I just briefly want to raise and rise rather and, and, and sing to this course a, a bit. Uh, I think we all know where we are with nursing homes and, and that issue. It's, 
extremely important. I often say the role of government is to do for people that which they can otherwise do for themselves. And folks in nursing rooms can't do for themselves, and so we need to be there to help them. We've heard about those that are on the brink of closure. Uh, we've heard about those that really e can't even hire staff. I know in my own community, you can work in a fast food restaurant uh, uh, and earn more money than you can, frankly, earn if you work in a nursing home. And, and we know how important it is for nursing home to have good people. We need to do this. This is uh, literally on the point, I think, of desperation. It's terribly important that we uh, pass this amendment. I'd certainly urge uh, all members, again, to think long and hard and push a green button on this one. It's just that important. Further discussion? Seeing none, Secretary. Madam President. Oh, Senator Dames. Uh, thank course. you, Madam President, for recognizing me. I would just like to make some final comments before we vote. Um, you can hear what's being said about how it's affecting our nursing homes, our seniors. And in our small communities, many a times the nursing home is our largest employer. Not only the largest employer, but they have personal relationships with the people coming into these homes. And these seniors coming into these homes, in many cases, these are their final home. This is their final home. And so we need to make sure that we provide them a final home that takes care of their needs. We also make, need to make sure that we keep these homes open in these small communities because in so many cases, if that home closes, the people in that community that need those services are going to have to be moved or go to locations several miles away. And when that happens, they become disconnected with their families because of the transportation, transportation commuting back and forth and things like that. So I really do urge you to do this from your heart and not from a political standpoint. We're talking about the lives of our seniors. In every day, we have more and more people getting into the need of nursing homes. As the uh, baby boomers move through this process, it's only going to get more needed. So today is the day. Today is the time. Today is the time to push the green button show our seniors that we are here to help them as much as we can. I know that this does not solve the problem, but it's a start, and it's a way that we can do some help, and it's a matter of where are we going to put our priorities. And I don't deny people from earning good salaries and things like that, but I do think when I see this, and it means putting $19 million into our senior centers or senior our nursing homes, or putting it into the administrative process, I'm going to go with my heart and I'm going to vote green and I encourage you to do the same. Senator Dames, I know you did not mean to impugn the motives of anyone who does not vote the same way that you do on this, on this motion. Is there any further discussion on the A66 amendment? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll. Senate is under call. Members will please vote. Members will please vote.
Senate is under call. Senate is under call. Secretary will change, will close the roll. There being 28 ayes and 31 nays, the motion does not fail and the amendment is not adopted. Further discussion of Senate File 1458, Senator.